Now, just to make sure we're using the same language when we refer to things, let's review the various names for many of the elements that make up a typical comic book page. The first page of a story with a large introductory illustration is called the splash page. Hey everybody, this is Petey from the Spinner Rack, and since I did something the other day about comic book storytelling, I thought I'd have to... I don't want to do this because they they're, have a much more accomplished channel than mine, but we had to deal with the All Splash Pages comic book. Since I don't think it hit, they did it. The Cartoon KFAB, they do a great, have a great site, but at the same time, they kind of zipped through this to get to the ones they like, which was Thor, Thor, Thor um, 1380 and the uh, Eric Larson issue. I think they talked about, um, they talked about the John Byrne um, Hulk issue and they also talked about Superman of uh, 75, but I think this really needs to be dealt with, not as, as far as a kid thing to say, you know what, I need more fights because that's what it seemed to be. And they get to the Eric Larson issue or Savage Dragon and they're just like, oh, look at the fights. This as a kid really uh, excited me. So I'm going to go to, and they have in the, I guess, the adult reactions, I can still look at the hope that there's no fights in this. Now, for this issue, well, ultimately, if you looked at the video I had at the beginning where Stanley talked about the splash page, ultimately the original splash page was setting up what was going to happen in the issue. It was like a double cover. Like you can see, and I don't have any, mostly for DC, you'd see a Batman cover, and then they'd have an inside splash page, which would tell you everything that was going to happen in the issue. Now, we're going to go through some Fantastic Four cover, um, um, splash pages, and you'll see that some of them is just add suspense, but they also sometimes explain the story. There's one classic cover that kind of shows you that, but we're going to use um, this Fantastic Four issue where we have an opening splash page which is more like the newer splash page, which almost tries to draw you into the story. So you have this cover that you bought, just so you can set up what the splash page is. Stanley sort of did a good, um, telling you what it is, but I want to get you that effect that you have when you open the page. So when you open up this page, you're like, you're stopped here because you don't know what the Fantastic Four is looking at. So you're not going to immediately run through this page. You're going to stop and look at the page. You're going to go through this because they're looking at something. Yes, there might be some suspense to it, but at the same time, you're, this is meant for you to sit back and read. So it's slowing you down right here. You're not just going to speed through it. We're going to see that later with some of the other splash pages we have. And then we have initial splash page. Let me go to the next one. Jack Kirby has another splash page with Galactus and the, the Watcher. And then you see the over-the-shoulder shots of the Fantastic Four. So this is, yeah, this is I think, this is, uh, I don't think they've done, and Kirby did this a lot. Because you see the issue before that. It was very, you know, it was uh, almost in between stories. And this one, you go from this splash page setting up stuff and saying Galactus, then seeing him with the Watcher. And it's this, you know, very regal sort of character with his um, summer outfit on, which I like to joke about. But it didn't, um, I think when I bought this, I think I bought it in the Treasury Edition. And they might have colored in the, the flesh colored parts. So if you look at, the, let's look at the another cover here. Oh, this one's another set up. So we got this the cover and this splash page. And then we're kind of, this doesn't have any dialogue. This just has the, you know, the splash um, title on it. But then we kind of stopped here because we know the thing is going through it. But this is another one which we're gonna, doesn't tell us a story. We just know from the emotion that it's a sad moment for Ben Grimm. But it's, see, this just sort of slows you down where you're like, not immediately turning the pages like, I say, manga. This kind of just slows you down. And then we go to our next issue, which is, okay, stop doing that. I just have to do this. We go to the Black Panther. We have introducing the Black Panther. This is a classic splash page. Because ultimately, we have the Black Panther here. 
You can also see that Y Wing fits in there. And then still let's show you what's sort of going to be in the story. That uh, fan the Black Panther is kind of stalking the Fantastic Four. And it's kind of, so that's where you get what the old classic splash pages were, which was a double cover. So, so this is old school. And then, so this is going to get us into getting it, because Kirby was the master of the splash page. And almost, uh, we, I don't want to get into the double splash page yet because that should be another episode on its own, because Kirby really did a double splash page throughout his career. But this one's a, a classic one, because this one's setting you up what you're going to see in this comic book. And so I don't think, as of right now, in present day comic books, they don't use this anymore. So we go to the next issue that we have set up. Um, stop that. We have this one, which has a you know has a fight as the you know has a fight as the cover, and then very much a relaxed issue of a storytelling moment between the the Fantastic Four, and this is sort of the human thing that they would do, where they would introduce the humanity of the characters, even though Reed is using his power, you know they're going you know, trying to get ready to. It's like they're trying to continue their honeymoon and whatnot. So we get a classic going away from the action, definitely not using the whole setting up what's going to be in the story. So, you know, there's going to be some more suspense to that. And this issue, next one, is going to be the classic splash page that um, Kirby would do within the story, where we have a setup, something's happening to the Silver Surfer, Dr. Doom is taking the power, it's the setup. And then we have this huge splash page right here where it's, we're, and once again, I had to stress that we're stopping here. We're not rushing away. We, Kirby is starting to use the splash page as his big climax to the story that Dr. Doom has stolen the Silver Surfer's cosmic powers. So that's one thing we remember. So, so to do with all splash pages, you'd have to also, you're dealing with time. Whereas the panels over here might go quicker, it might go slower, depending on how you read it. But when you get to this, even if you read the dialogue, you might hold on this page. And I think Frank Miller also talks about trying to deal with time. And you can see some of his effects too when he does comic books. We're not gonna get into that because I, we just wanna deal with going to the total splash page. And I'm gonna do one other example using the final chapter. Now this is the classic way to use the, the use the internal splash page, which I which I just said. So we have here Spider-Man under all this rubble, and everything, the weight of everything above him. So this is the classic final chapter sequence in Amazing Spider-Man 33. So if we go through this, we have this thing where there's a lot of panels, which which is what um. Steve Ditko is known for, and slowly the panels start to shift as Spider-Man tries to escape. And then it keeps shifting and shifting. And as you, and this is why the dialogue, which I think having Stan sort of fill up the page with dialogue, it slows you down. And that's what we have to remember when we go to some of the classic all splash pages is that these all splash pages issues kind of work with the comic book Stanley type dialogue, where we're trying to keep the reader and concentrating in different areas. So this, I mean, it can work without, without the dialogue, but at the same time, it works even better having this moment where this building where Spider-Man is slowly, can't believe it, he's thinking about his loved ones and then the memory and the loss of Uncle Ben and then ultimately, look at that. Look at how far he's gotten. He's still, this way he's drawn, is still the weight is heaviest on the bottom. And then when you get to this, and he's free, even though there's only a caption and, 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 um, and a little bit of dialogue, it's still kind of, you still kind of hold on this. And this for any, you know, what they say, like this, Steve Ditko is a sort of a quirky artist. This is where he did some of the classic Marvel. So it's sort of something that is similar to what you'd see from John Romita later. So you kind of froze on this. And that's what I want you, everyone to remember. 
that you freeze on it. Now we can say we can go to the other classic all splash pages issues. Okay, so to set up the all splash pages issue, you have this issue of the Hulk 315 because the this Hulk run was broken because of um, some office politics with the Hulk, where John Byrne had a long run planned plan for the Hulk. He was very excited about it. He did a bunch of interviews, and ultimately, um, things he got into conflict with the well. It was behind the scenes conflict, not connected with directly with Shooter. But Shooter had issue with, I guess, stuff that Denny O'Neill, um, I guess, wasn't wasn't policing in this comic book. And Denny O'Neill saw the all splash pages issue and and put it on the shelf. And ultimately, since everyone was kind of gun shy at Marvel about that the shooter was going to approve it or not, and he put it on the shelf, so Byrne was like, oh, "What else can I do if I can't, you know, like, you know, I, I can't do this stuff where they're shelving my stuff?" So he kind of, I mean, that's a, it's we're simplified. It's more in depth than that, but um, we can talk about that later. But we have this issue, the Hulk, where Bruce Banner is free at last, right? So we have this issue, and this is just a setup that. Doc Samson is going to free the Hulk. This is a dream sequence. Let's quickly go through this. It's still from my scans from Gitcore. And this nutrient bath splits the Hulk. It splits the Hulk. And, and um, you know, this is Doc Samson using his scientific skill. Like, I think some people have been critical of the actual science of it, which is, it's a comic book. So splitting the Hulk, all of that science, works into how smart Doc Samson is. So Doc Samson has the idea that he doesn't want the Hulk to be used by S.H.I.E.L.D. in any wrong way, you know, have the Hulk's power. So then he decides he's going to rescue the Hulk. Now, while he's here, because his idea was that this mindless Hulk could be retrained and worked into society in a, a, a like sort of a, like in a, a positive way. So we have all these cool sequences, and it gets dark in this issue. So he comes in there, he sees that the Hulk is with a neural neuralizer, and he just has an idea. So he's going to reverse the process, but at the same time, there's this car crash. You know, of course, this is, this is what happened because it's automated. It has the crash, and the next scene you know, of the Hulk is back, and he's fully. He, this is just a mindless. Um, we, at this point, he's just a mindless rage, rage monster to use the Avengers term. So just to set up this issue, and the Hulk is just like going all out. His people are dying. You know, he's two people. The things are destroyed, and then at the same time, Doctor Samson, instead of who actually stopped the Hulk the first time, is now deciding that, you know, this time once he stops him, he's going to kill him. So instead of what he was planning, because he knows that the Hulk has been, his mind has been, um, I guess, been st was a stimulated, and it's all it's just all rage at this point, and all this destruction. But he doesn't use his science in saying, you know, there might be another way. Now John Byrne's been on record saying he's the he's Marvel's Donald Duck who deals with everything in anger. So this is the Hulk with no Bruce Banner, just full on anger. And this is something akin to how Stan Lee had it, how Roy Thomas, Steve Englehart, you start to see sort of shift towards humor. Then Lin Wen sort of did the Goofy Hulk, the Hulk where you see, as in Goofy as in from Walt Disney, where the Hulk sort of um, befriends animals. If you look before that, if an animal sort of went to the Hulk in, in an aggressive manner, he would fight back. Whereas... The uh, Lee Wynn Hulk would be kind of like, hey, here's a, you know, here's an animal. Hey, this is my friend. He's trying to make friends and whatnot. So since we have that set up, we're going to this issue here. Marvel Fanfare 29. Now in this issue, since um, ultimately Jim Shooter saw it, even though it was shelled and liked it, and then he published it. And of course they sent um, burn money for this issue, but this was supposed to be issue um, 320. And it was already finished, so it got put out. So this was a surprise to me. I had no warning that this happened. And I came in, I didn't know anything about this issue. 
for the Cinema Marvel fanfare, the burn cover, I had to buy it. And then you open up, you get to the splash page, and then an uh, idea that it'll be a story. He tells you a story on nothing but splash pages. And um, Hal Milgram is usually the starter. Uh, he's usually at the start of this um, with a little joke gag telling what it's going to be. Mm-hmm. And he sort of jokes that it's uh, pinup pages. So let's just look at this. So we have a setup with a character we don't know. And then there's the element that, that's missing from here is that we don't know that there's an ongoing story throughout Marvel. So if you've been reading Marvel comics, you know this isn't a surprise. So it would be a mystery that um, ultimately wouldn't be solved in this book. But we start with a Native American just sitting out here, possibly New Mexico. But it ultimately, with the dialogue, it's supposed to slow you down. And this is a splash page, so you're sort of reading this and you know that it's tranquil. So even if you're ready, want to see the next page, you want to go quickly. And comic books are set up so you go quickly. This is really to slow you down. So when you get to the next page, here's the Hulk lands. And it's not immediately in, a, in attack mode right now. There's some distance between them. So this is the quickest panel you go to. But at the same time, this is, um, I mean, let's go back for a second. This one, it doesn't have... Um, who is it? Doesn't have Keith Williams as the background anchor. So this is just full burn in this issue. And he's doing some amazing work with some of my favorites of his this period. So this is just like, oh, is he back on the Hulk? And I didn't know that this fit in with his storyline. It just seemed like, oh, they just sort of had this issue that they just published. So when we go to the next one, then we have another sort of slower scene where the Hulk is looking at him, and we know that he's just full of rage right now. We know what Burns said in his interviews that he's like just he's he's just he just he's the the Donald Duck just anger just deals with everything with anger, and that's what the captions are supposed to be there for you to read for you not to just rush to the next panel to see what happens. But we've seen all those issues before that after three fifteen where the Hulk has just been dealing with everything with anger. So of course, what's he gonna do next? He's just like, <laughs> he's just ready to go at it. And this dude is just cool. But at this point, he's holding up in the air. So it's not supposed to be a quick thing. It's supposed to be getting a, he's getting a, he's looking and getting, trying to get a reaction out of this guy. You know, even though he's mindless, where like, you know, there's, I mean, this is a, almost the Godzilla sort of effect where you look at Godzilla and you're like, you know, doing the personification, trying to figure this out. But you know, the, listening to the caption is trying to slow you down. You're not supposed to just go through and see a big, huge fight. And this is an element right here, which connects to the Lean Win um, hope, because we know Byrne is not gonna do this. He said he's not Marvel's goofy. He's not after friendship. He can't, he, he has, he's just totally mindless. And this Native American is, says the one word we knew that meant a lot to the Hulk. This, this is, if you, I think that's why I had to go back to this. But this is, um, this is a really powerful story because this I didn't know we were going to get. But, you know, it is all splash page so you can rush through it. So then we also see the Hulk's mood change. He's ready, but now we know he's holding it up. So we know we're not supposed to be rushing. And we, you know, we got the Hulk in this character. And now we had Doc Samson kind of say, you know, he's full of rage, but now we see something that's giving him pause. A term that he, there's something in there. And Doc Samson said there was nothing in there. And you can see with the other fights, but then it's cool. You should read this run because there's a lot of cool fights in here. But this is the, after all those other fights, this is the quiet issue that we have here. So I don't want to go through it and say, why is there no fights? You got all splash pages, it should be fights. We're going to get to more of that later. So then he's kind of pressed even more because this person put his hand up to the Hulk. But at the same time, he's still using the one word that meant so much to the Hulk. And we see that his a little bit more anger, and then he starts to listen. So ultimately, 
this is the bigger surprise because when I was reading Hulk at this time, I was like, that means he's not mindless. That means that um, it's Doc Sanson has been totally going on ego. And then he says, all right, <laughs> you, you know, he's just chilling. And you also have to read. And the, the captions, and this is, a, if you're going to do stuff like that that's very open, it's always good to have these captions because the captions also slow you down and get you to stay on the page because that's what the artist is trying to do. They're definitely the Marvel, Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, they're really controlling time. And that's the hardest thing to do in comic books because you have kids that want to see the cool pages. So you get to this page, and you're like, oh, no, no. But at the same time, you're reading the story. You're slowing down. And then whatever this concoction is, is going towards the Hulk. So now we're kind of saying, this is more than what I see. And it's just something that we would see in, um, you know, then uh, a Native American story. And then next thing you know, it's like, uh-oh, this guy isn't what I thought he was. So this point, he says, he's, at he said that it's almost as if he's thinking. Of course, that's impossible. And that's the thing he talks about, the neural tranquil, uh, tranquilizer papers that's coming down, but he's saying he's actually thinking. So this is what they said. And this is the mistake that all the other heroes had because of, obviously, this is what the hope, that's what make, burn, makes Burn run like so good because it's like, this is, he didn't forget that, um, that the heroes are just sometimes see the Hulk as just a monster. It's something I set up in the first Avengers. So then he does this and he's almost thinking. And he said, that's odd for a mile. He's thinking about all the past stuff. And we're caught up like, oh man, there's even Wolverine in here. At one point he, he thought was his friend and some of his enemies. Everyone that everyone that's come in, and then what happens? Uh, it's a comic book, and then uh, this is what, another thing I'd love to get into is sort of the comic book coloring and the mood coloring. That instead of deciding to have foreground and background, they decided the burn has decided that it should be one solid color for these characters that are coming up to him. They are like, this is giving the ominous tone that's here. And it's something that you can do with film, but you'd have to use a lot of gels and whatnot. But this is an effect that I think comic books should use more, which I call mood coloring, which is, you could see done a lot in the 50s. And I think Byrne has used it a couple of times with Wolverine for the kill shots, all red, stuff like that. So let's keep going. And then all of that thing, we pull back into the action. And that's what I'm saying. This I'm doing it slowly because we have to go through this issue slowly. Because we're like, wow, there's something there. And he could have been what um, Doc Sanson wanted, like some, somehow rehabilitate him or, you know, try to teach him from scratch. So then, of course, we have Hammer and Anvil. Like, wow, these guys. Now, I like Hammer and Anvil. And then Burns' approach to the characters, when Herb Trimpey was drawing them, they were almost the same size as the Hulk. And Burns sort of gives them um, regular human size to a hulking monster. So they're back in town. And I was like, oh, wow, these guys got some cool new outfits. And then at the same time, this is a bigger part of the issue because the Hulk reacts because he doesn't want to die. At this point, that's what he says. But then that's something that is another question throughout the run, the run is why is the Hulk fighting? If he's mindless, why is he doing anything? And that's the thing. He's supposed to be brainless. And this is from the, out of the mouths of these dummies. So then that's when um, <laughs> Hammer says even a bug will fight for his life, Anvil. <laughs> and we get this moment where we get the, I mean, since he's, he's in the foreground, I mean, he, they use his regular color, but it gives that same effect as what happened earlier with the villains. And Hulk's ready to fight, but this, that's been stolen from him. That has been, and this keys into what happens with Hammer and Anvil. If one dies, the other dies, which is coming up next. So I did, I don't think I'm reacting the same way I did when I was um, reading it. When I got to this, it's like, what? 
<laughs> like they, they, we just got them. And then next year we had this emotional moment with the villains where um, we know that the other one has to die also because they're connected by this alien thing that, yeah, it just, we don't need to necessarily need to know this in the story, but it adds a little more drama to it. You know, if you read the comic books, it's even more of an effect knowing this is going to happen. And the Hulk is still kind of calm. We have this line, this is a mystery that's running through all the Marvel titles. So it's not supposed to be solved. I understand as a reader, you want to understand what this character, the Native American character did and why he would do something like that. But um, we're not supposed to be, this is not supposed to be revealed right now. So, uh-oh, it was all a ruse. It's totally not, they shouldn't have got tri tire tracks. And this is a classic, there's so much story in here. There's tire tracks, and it's even say this, the, the departing van, <laughs> we had the whole thing, and the Hulk reacting to this. But the, the whole story is there in one page. And then, what he hasn't done this entire and burns entire run, he speaks. So this is a hit because if you if you read Burns Run, it's action most throughout the entire thing. Even that dream sequence had a little action. But um, that is that didn't get us into another story. But this that was see, really one of the first all splash pages that I know of or at least in present day in the 80s, it was all splash pages, right? So with that said, and I don't know that, um, that um, Walter Simonson took inspiration from Byrne when he did his, but let's go into this issue. Now in this issue, this is done a little different. No, it's not actually done a little different. I think the end is done differently because it's still about working with time. So we can't forget that. So it is, it, no, it is different because it has a double splash page in it. But if we go from here, this is all setting up this. We saw the dragon on the, the Midgard serpent, sorry, the Midgard serpent on the cover. But then we get to see that this character stretches. What is it? It's a, a, a serpent that encompasses the entire earth. So we are ultimately should, as we said, slow down here. So we have this page, and I'm gonna, but this, cause it's, it has more action, we're gonna go a little faster. So I'm not going to, I think, talk too much over it. Obviously this is, thing, but then we have this, obviously, there's a lot of dialogue here. So you're gonna slow down here, cause it's setting up everything that's going on. But it's also cool to go through this quickly because it's a fun fight. Now this is an action one, and it has a double plate. Now he hasn't locked himself into, just doing um, splash pages and, double, and you know, there's double splash pages. The last page has panels. So at the same time, he's allowing himself freedom to do what he, what he wants in the story. And also the Midgard Serpent is, show, is makes him more immense doing this double splash page. But I think uh, KFAB, they did a really good um, review of this issue. So we can quickly go through this. Because it's, I mean, it's the, the title, the, the the sound effects, I keep calling, using ad terms, the sound effects are cool. The Thor is at, this is, I mean, Thor is at his lowest at this point, but it's a, a very grand story. And um, we get to see all this cool stuff that's going on there. And there's also this poem that's going in the story. So you're not supposed to actually go that quick through it. But at the same time, we're just gonna, you can, when you go back, and I've, I think I've, I've read this book many a time in my collection. So I think I might have read it quickly. And then at the same time, I'm going back. So it's like, this is something that you're gonna read a couple times. And um, we have this moment where it's adding suspense because uh, what happened to Thor and um, the Midcut Serpent is going in for the kill. But then, of course, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mjolnir's song, and Mjolnir gets us close up, and then wow, it's like, and this one was um, penciled 
I guess I'm not sure if it was breakdowns or full pencils, but it's pencils with um, Salbu Shema inking. And you get another great shot. And it's like one of these things where you, <laughs> you really feel like you, you're reading a, um, well, I would say Greek tragedy, but this has actually be a Norse tra tragedy. And then, of course, oh, his face is all messed up. We know it's over. And then he's going to press the advantage. Nope, it's not over. Look at the, look at this. And this sequence, and this is a sequence that, um, and I'll go to it. This is a sequence that um, I think an artist like Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Darrow would do. So then we got the, the slow storytelling moment of, of what's going on here. So they like that. Oh, no, he's in trouble. And then there's no dialogue here. And then, of course, that's, that's a nice sequence of uh, with clearly slow storytelling. But it's in this page where you can basically turn as quickly as you want. But this is not like manga. You're going to slow down. I keep telling you this, guys. This. And here's a moment of reflection where we got, wow, what's the name? Thor is, is, has really done some stuff to him. But, you know, it's still the, the, Midgar, the Midgar Serpent is still here. It's still powerful. Thor is like, wait a second. That's, this is where we get our most amount of dialogue here. And he's like, is he merely a player, a merely a pawn? And he's got this curse, but it's like, this leaves me out. Like, I'm supposed to meet him and die, but at the same time, you know, I can't die. So he might as well, you know, no matter the cost, he's going in. And then wait a second, he's like, we get the thought, that's the thing, the thought balloons and that, and he's like, uh-oh. <laughs> he's, he's, he's like, he's going, so I gotta move now, and he's like, of course, Thor is, is blowing, the Midgar Serpent is going for his, and then Thor is like moving, and, and there's somewhat, somewhat of Thor's humor in there, you know, and um, what can I say? This is, a, that's the same. I don't, I, I think it turned, that's what I was talking about. I mean, you look at this, and of course, it's easy to be inspired by it, but it's by, you've just shown two giants in the field understanding the art form and not just um you know the understanding that this this also needs you to really look at and slow down and be like wow like that sort of thing but then we're like oh no Thor's in trouble and there's no head to the the Midgard serpent and this issue no I was going to say something else I'm thinking that um, but um, you get to see, well, we get to worry about Thor falling to the ground, and then he fell to the earth. He fell, breaking not his resting place. And then we have he switches it up. He goes to panels here, and we wonder what's left of Thor, or did Thor just ultimately die, and all of his armor is left? But then this is the crazy part of Walt Simonson's comics, is they say next issue. When you look at it and you're like, there's no next issue. Look, there's nothing there. And as a kid, I would have these moments of like, he just finished them. There's nothing else you could do here. But this is, of course, a master, you know, doing his thing. So lastly, you have to go to the big one, the one that made the most money. Superman 75. Now, this is the culmination of the Doomsday storyline. I think everyone knows Doomsday. He's appeared in movies, and he's um, you know appeared in animation, and he's come back to DC Comics many a time. Not the necessarily threat that he was, but I mean, this was a big issue from 1993, and this utilizes the all splash pages technique. Now, this is um, done by Dan Jurgens, but it's part of a Superman title, the Mike Carlin um, Superman team, and um, Dan Jurgens did the last issue. So in this last issue, we have a you know decent splash page that we know that they're gonna fight. But I think in this one, image was pretty big at this point. So you'll see there's gonna be some shifts in the style of this, and this is why the image guys say that they killed Superman, because you can see the approach changes. 
So then we go from here and then I don't know that this page necessarily goes to that one. because We don't really have it set up that um, he's gonna be able to throw him. So it's a jump. He's kind of doing time jumps and that's kind of harder for, um, it's definitely snaps, just giving a snapshot effect because the story that I showed you two other ones that the storytelling kind of follows a linear format. And this one, I guess it feels like maybe Jurgen was going for it. It's kind of jumping ahead. And you see when it gets to the end, it'll slow down to do the effects I was telling you. But this has been more, um, been more right as of right now. Sorry. So this one kind of, when you go to the next page, kind of, uh, if you see this one, it's kind of a, um, kind of a jump, you know, and it sets up this page and more setting up the fight and what's going on around here. And these guys trying to help out. But at the same time, then we have this page, which has the, the credits. And I was really struggling with this page here and, uh, setup of it's a rough one it's a rough one and i think i don't know what to say it's this is it's kind of and then it's not as clean but i guess here he was up in the air and it looks like he was presenting them then of course yeah he could throw them but i don't think these payoffs is as well but then Ultimately, and hitting that one kind of saves the day and helps these guys out. So that's kind of clean going from here to here. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of, angles are kind of different. I mean, obviously, this is a harder thing because a lot of comic artists change their camera angles. But at the same time, it should always be kind of pleasing to the eye. So um, as you go along, then we have something that's a little more clear, but it's another sort of jump in time where they kind of, a lot of stuff is happening between this panel and that panel. And that's where, and this where it kind of it starts to go back to storytelling. Because it seemed like there was kind of jumps and then now it's kind of like, you know, so yeah, these, this is getting a little cleaner, but the camera, I don't know. I don't know where John, where Jimmy is standing here. It kind of just wants to the image where it's like saying, hey, whatever's going to be coolest. So, and then this, this one really, the angle really bugged me. I was just like, what is going on? Yes, I guess it could be cool, but it's just weird. And it's sort of like, Doomsday try to fit in for the panel. <laughs> and then, you're reading the comic, they're like, okay, they give it a tombstone as the cover. They're giving this set, like, is there a surprise? Nope. We already know that he's going to die. And that's what they're selling the book for. Now here, there's another jump in time. Look at this. It's just like, I don't know where Superman was going to go with his thing. I thought he was going to go up and hit, but then now, and, and hit and they were going up in the air, and they're going this way. So, and then he somehow grabs his legs. It's cool though, that's the thing that he's going for. That this is some cool stuff and it's definitely the resale value and possibly most of these pages except for that page with the credits is probably uh, enormous. Stuff. What am I saying? Like, of course it's close. And then, okay, he just pushed Superman down in there. This, is, this would suggest that there's time jumps here. You know, it's because um, Superman's gone and then we don't necessarily know Look at here, I guess he was pushing him down, but it's hard to say what's going on in this one. And then and this is another odd angle, fitting stuff in. We know what's gonna happen, we're gonna hit him in the butt, maybe hit him in the back, maybe, or the butt, I'm not sure. But um I think this gets cleaner, you know, then there's another odd angle as you go along. And um, what happened here? He hit him and then, okay, this is, 
time is not really is that clean. And I think Dan Jurgens was a little cleaner with his storytelling earlier. But here we get to get better. So then we got this, and we got a punch to the face with the other hand. So this is it's getting it's getting clearer. Kind of another jump. Superman just decides to hold his hand, hold his hands, and he's breaking the bones. He finally hurt him. The dead is kind of right at the knee over here. That's kind of hard to see, you know. And um, then we just got to, this is, this is really hard to, to assess. I think at some point it starts to get a little clearer. So this is what I like. Even though it's not the odd angle to fit Doomsday in, this is going to lead to something cool, right? So it's a nice shot of Superman, Doomsday in there. It's an odd angle, but it works. It works with everything. And then this is a nice segue from this, even though Doomsday wasn't necessarily doing what, what Superman was doing. It's cool. And it works in, as far as the story. The storytelling goes. Then another odd one, but a good, a cool, cool shot though. And then it's another leads to another cool one here. And then leading up to which is a would be a full splash page, and you'd be slowed down to say, oh no, Superman's gone. But ultimately, and then there, it's Kate. Day that Superman died. And those last two panels, pages sort of really slow you down. But it's like this one is a lot different because it's sort of it sort of jumps and storytelling in it. And um so it has to be assessed. Now, as I said, I'm you know not necessarily I'm not gonna do the um Eric Larson, but I would recognize it. It's already done, I think it did well in the uh, cartoon kayfabe um, podcast or so video video blog so but this is how this is what happens when you do it all you know, you have to you have to concentrate on time and I can't really do it like this here but if you look at this book like um, Frank Miller kind of plays with time and with the, with the splash pages also so it's not all splash pages book but he, he definitely plays around with it in this, this um, book. So that's about it. Um, all splash pages, I think we covered it. And um, yeah, that's it. Spinner out.